Greetings everyone. In this video, we're going to explore the topic of localizing ischemic change that occurs on the EKG because the EKG is a pretty cool tool and it will allow us to actually see which part of the myocardium is ischemic at any given time. So we talked about ischemia and all of the many presentations of ischemia on the EKG in the last video. Now we have to refine a little bit and to narrow down all of the ischemic patterns to the most important ischemic pattern that occurs on the EKG. And it's most important because it has a time sensitive treatment associated with it. And that treatment is primary PCI or angioplasty. And so the most important ischemic pattern on the EKG that we need to recognize is called ST segment elevation. And so ST segment elevation, just as a review, remember that anytime we're looking at a, a 12 lead, we're going to look at one complex in each of the 12 leads. We're going to determine where the isoelectric line is. Mine's just above this red line. We're going to locate the J point. In this case, I'm going to put a line at the level of the J point. And we're going to determine if the J point lies above in line with or below the, S the isoelectric line. In this case, you'll notice there are about two, two and a half millimeters of J point elevation or of ST segment elevation. And this is precisely the pattern that we're looking for. So what we're trying to find is ST segment elevation on the tracing. In addition to that, remember that there are some T wave changes that are associated with this. Those T wave changes were a symmetrical meaning right and left legs were symmetric with, with respect to one another. We're looking for a broad base. We're looking for a peaked or tented appearance of the T wave. And we're looking for a hyperacute T wave. And that was a T wave that we defined as having an amplitude greater than half the overall amplitude of the QRS complex. So the most important ischemic pattern that we want to identify on the EKG very quickly is ST segment elevation. This is the one that tells us the patient requires emergent angioplasty in the cardiac cath suite. So now we need to define a little bit more what exactly constitutes ST segment elevation. How much does there have to be and where? And also in the new 2013 guidelines, practice guidelines, the genders were specifically mentioned. So the numbers for ST segment elevation threshold for males and females are slightly different, but don't worry, they're pretty close and they're pretty easy to remember. So let's take a look at these definitions. So I'm actually going to split this into quadrants here. That'll make our life a little bit easier. And let's take a look at all of our different options here. So the first option we're going to look for is the option for the limb leads or the precordial leads, excluding leads V2 and V3. So we're going to look for ST segment elevation. And in the limb leads or in leads essentially V4 through V6, there must be at least greater than or equal to one millimeter of ST segment elevation. And that has to occur in two or more contiguous leads. So again, this is greater than or equal to two or more contiguous leads. And we'll talk about what contiguous leads are here momentarily. The next one we're going to look at is going to involve leads V2 and V3 specifically. So in leads V2 through V3, there are some specific rules for what determines the threshold for ST segment elevation. So sometimes a little bit of ST segment elevation is okay. There are certain things that cause ST segment elevation that are not due to myocardial infarction. And in those cases, the ST segment elevation that does exist should be below these thresholds that we're identifying here. All right, so in leads V2 and V3, we've got to have ST segment elevation of greater than or equal to 2 millimeters in men, 
or greater than or equal to 1.5 millimeters of ST segment elevation in women. So this is where the genders are a little bit different here in terms of the amount of elevation. And as we said before here, this has to occur in two or more contiguous leads. So greater than or equal to two or more contiguous leads. Next, we're going to look for ST segment elevation that occurs in lead AVR. This is not a lead we talk very much about, but it's making a little bit more headlines in the recent years as a predictor of left main coronary artery occlusion or LAD occlusion. So we're going to evaluate that one a little bit more closely. Again here, we need ST segment elevation of greater than or equal to one millimeter. And we also need multi-lead, another way to say this is diffuse, ST segment depression. So when we have ST segment elevation of greater than or equal to one millimeter in lead AVR, then we want to look at the rest of the tracing to see if we have multiple leads with ST segment depression. Again, this will tell us about left main coronary artery occlusion or LAD occlusion. So this is going to be an important thing for us to evaluate. Last but not least, we're going to look for ST segment depression in greater than or equal to two precordial leads in the range of leads V1 through V4 and this will tell us about posterior wall changes. So there are four rules here that we kind of have to remember and in order to summarize them easily essentially what we're looking for here is greater than or equal to one millimeter of ST segment elevation in two or more contiguous leads not involving leads V2 and V3. That elevation can occur in leads 1, 2, and 3, or AVR, AVL, AVF. It can occur in leads V1, or in leads V4, V5, V6. And any of those changes that occur there, greater than or equal to one millimeter of ST segment elevation, and it must involve two or more contiguous leads, one millimeter is the threshold. For leads V2 and V3 specifically, there must be greater than or equal to two millimeters of ST segment elevation in male patients, or 1.5 millimeters of ST segment elevation in female patients. Next, we want to look at lead groupings. And lead groupings are anatomically similar or geographically similar areas of the heart. And the leads that look at those anatomically similar areas of the heart, the way and the location that they're located on the 12 lead EKG. So we're going to start off with the inferior leads. Those leads that look at the inferior wall of the left ventricle. And those leads are leads 2, 3, and AVF. So when we talk about lead groups, the first group and the most important group probably to remember are the inferior leads because 90% of all ST segment elevation MI that occurs, occurs in the inferior leads. So the inferior leads are leads 2, 3, and AVF. They are located on the bottom left hand corner of the EKG tracing and leads 2, 3 and AVF look at the inferior wall of the left ventricle. So that's going to be a really important lead group for us to remember. The next lead group we want to remember are the anterior leads. And the anterior leads are leads V1 through V4. So that's these guys here, V1, V2, V3, and V4. The third lead group that we want to look at are the lateral leads. The lateral leads are comprised of leads V5, V6, lead 1, and lead AVL. So this is lead 1, lead AVL, 
v5, and v6. So there are a total of four lead groups, and I'm not going to mention the, th the fourth one yet. We'll look at that specifically in just a few moments. So these three lead groups are the really important ones that you have to remember. Inferior wall of the left ventricle, most important, leads 2, 3, and AVF. Anterior wall of the left ventricle leads V1 through V4. And the lateral wall of the left ventricle leads 1 and AVL. Now let's take a look at a concept called reciprocal change. And reciprocal change is little more than two opposing viewing leads or two opposing view angles. And these leads essentially are seeing mirrored images from with respect to one another. So where one sees ST segment elevation, for example, the other lead sees ST segment depression. So take a moment to look at this graph and just take it all in for just a second. What you'll notice is that if there's posterior wall ST segment elevation, as is illustrated by the chart or the little graph here on the right, with respect to the anterior leads, the way the anterior leads see the data is actually ST segment depression. So what you'll notice is that these two images mirror one another. So this image essentially is the mirrored image to this, where there's ST segment depression, uh, ST segment elevation here. There's an equal amount or similar amount of ST segment depression in the anterior leads. So reciprocal change is this concept that says that if you have two cameras, in this case our cameras are EKG leads, and those leads oppose one another, meaning that they're close to 180 degrees to one another, that when they view data, if one sees ST segment elevation, the other will see ST segment depression. Conversely, if one sees ST segment depression, the other may see ST segment elevation. So the concept of reciprocal change is really important because the presence of reciprocal ST segment depression on a tracing where there is ST segment elevation is highly confirmatory that the elevation is due to MI. So we talked briefly earlier in the session that other diseases other than MI or ischemia may cause ST segment elevation, but there are no diseases, none whatsoever, that produce ST segment elevation and reciprocal ST segment depression. So this is a really important pattern to recognize on the EKG because it's highly confirmatory that the ST segment elevation that you see in one area is actually due to MI and it's safe to call that ST segment elevation MI. So now we need to evaluate the different lead groups that are reciprocal to one another. So the first lead group we're going to evaluate is the inferior leads. And the inferior leads are reciprocal to the whoops, high lateral leads. And most of the time what you'll see here is ST segment elevation in the inferiors and ST segment depression in the high laterals and specifically here we're looking at leads 1 and AVL with lead AVL being the most reciprocal lead. So we're going to look here at leads 2, 3 and AVF and if we see ST segment elevation the next thing we should look for are reciprocal changes meaning ST segment depression and we'll see them most likely in lead AVL first. This is the lead that reciprocates or that changes ST segment depression earlier than lead one. The next one we want to look at, the next lead group, inferior, high lateral. The next lead group is anterior. These leads are reciprocal to the inferior leads. So that is that leads V1 through V4, if you see ST segment elevation here, the next thing you should do is go to leads 2, 3, and AVF and look for ST segment depression. Again, the presence of reciprocal change, 
is highly confirmatory that the ST segment elevation that you see in one area of the, of the EKG is actually due to MI. All right, the last one that we're going to talk about briefly, I'm sorry, the second to last one we're going to talk about briefly is that the inferior leads are also reciprocal to the anterior leads. And this should make sense from the previous. If anterior is reciprocal to inferior, well then inferior is reciprocal to anterior. Most of the time what you'll see when this occurs is you'll see ST segment elevation in leads 2, 3, and AVF. And you may see ST segment depression in leads V1 through V4. All right, and last but not least, perhaps the most important one to remember here is that the posterior leads are reciprocal to the anterior leads. And so I'll write it in that fashion because we're not actually going to see the posterior tracing on the standard 12 lead ECG. So in the posterior leads, these would be leads V7 through V9 that are placed on the back. We would see ST segment elevation if we were to perform this 15 lead EKG or this additional V7 through V9 lead placement. But we really don't need to do that because we can actually see this data through the eyes of the anterior lead. So in the anterior leads, what we'll look for, these are leads V1 through V3 or V4, what we're going to look for here is ST segment depression. So the presence of ST segment depression in leads V1 through V3 should prompt us to consider posterior wall STEMI. So these are reciprocal lead groups. You kind of have to commit these to memory. And the more that you play with these, the more that they will be ingrained in your brain and that it will all kind of come together for you and make sense. So one of the things I want to quickly go back to that I forgot to mention is the concept of contiguous leads. So when we talk about contiguous leads, we're talking about two or more leads that view geographically similar areas of the heart. And they of course follow the lead grouping. So when we look at contiguous leads in the inferior wall, for example, leads two and three are contiguous, meaning that they are looking at similar areas. Leads three and AVF are contiguous, and leads two and AVF are contiguous because they're all looking, these pairs are looking at similar areas of the heart. In a similar fashion, V1 through V2 are contiguous, V2 through V3 are contiguous, V3 through V4 are contiguous, V4 through V5 are contiguous, and V5 through V6 are all contiguous. But lead V1 is not contiguous with V4, and V1 is not contiguous with V5 because there's just too much that separates these. It's only the pairs that I've listed here. And certainly last but not least, the lateral leads, 1 and AVL, are contiguous and leads V5 and V6 are contiguous. So these are important because contiguous lead groups bring us back to the original slide that we started with with the definition of ST segment elevation thresholds. In order to call a change STEMI on the EKG, it has to involve two or more contiguous leads of ST segment elevation. And now you're armed with the knowledge of what exactly constitutes contiguous leads. So let's pick up where we left off. We talked about reciprocal lead groups. Now we're going to look at a few cases and put into practice those lead groups. And just for the sake of time and simplicity, I've actually enlarged the areas that we're going to view just to make it a little bit easier for you to see on the screen. So very quickly, when we go through an EKG, we're going to go to a single complex in each of the 12 leads, we're going to locate the J point, we're going to compare it against the isoelectric line, 
and we're going to determine if there's ST segment elevation or if there's ST segment depression. If there's ST segment elevation, we're going to see if there's ST segment elevation of greater than or equal to the amount of elevation necessary for that particular lead. So remember that the limb leads, leads 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, and leads V3 through V6, I'm sorry, leads V4 through V6, only require one or more millimeters of ST segment elevation in two or more contiguous leads in order for you to call that STEMI. So in this case, lead 2, lead 3, lead AVF, massive amounts of ST elevation. So if you look here, I'll just quickly identify the isoelectric. Here's our isoelectric line roughly. And here's the location of the J point roughly. And you'll see there are about four millimeters of ST segment elevation here. There's about the same in AVF. There's maybe three in lead two. So in this particular case, leads two, three, and AVF reveal more than one millimeter of ST segment elevation that constitutes a good threshold meet and it occurs in all three leads. So the presence of ST elevation of greater than one millimeter and its occurrence in two or more contiguous leads, in this case all three leads of the inferior wall, this is what, this is the pattern that we're evaluating for. This is the pattern we want to recognize on the tracing because this patient needs to go to the cardiac cath lab and have angioplasty performed. So in addition to finding the ST segment elevation here, if you'll recall the reciprocal lead groups, in this case leads 1 and AVL are reciprocal to the inferior lead, you'll notice let's try that again. You'll notice here that there is massive ST segment depression. In fact there's about three or four millimeters of ST segment depression. So leads AVL and AVF are reciprocal to one another, whereas if you see ST segment elevation in AVF, you anticipate finding ST segment depression in AVL, and in this case, we do find those changes occurring. So 2, 3, and AVF, massive amount of ST segment elevation, reciprocal ST segment depression in AVL, this is inferior STEMI. It meets the definition, and we have the presence of reciprocal change. You'll also notice a broad-based, hyperacute, peak-tented, and symmetric T wave in this particular example. Let's move on to the next case. In this case, we'll notice that the ST segment elevation occurs in leads V1 through essentially V5. There's ST segment elevation, and I've blown that up for you here. So if you'll recall the lead group that we've isolated this to, V1 through V4 or V5, these are the anterior leads. And now we're going to look in the anterior leads. Remember, we wanted V2 and V3. This is a woman, so it needs to have 1.5 millimeters of ST segment elevation at a minimum. And in fact, if we find the isoelectric line here and we find the location of the J point, there are about four or five millimeters of ST segment elevation in lead V2. It's roughly the same thing in lead V3. My line's a little bit above the J point there. There's about four or five millimeters of ST segment elevation. There's a little bit of elevation in V1. There's a lot of elevation in V4. So this constitutes meeting the rule of ST segment elevation and it occurs in two or more contiguous leads. And in fact, it occurs in leads V1 through V5. So five contiguous leads. This is anterior wall STEMI. This is precisely the pattern that we're looking for. We're looking to find ST segment elevation on the tracing, and we're looking for that ST segment elevation to occur in two or more contiguous leads. The next case, leads 1 and AVL are affected, and I've blown those up for you a little bit so that we can see them better. Same thing, we would evaluate all these J points in, one, in each of these 12 leads, and I've kind of already done that work for you just to make the video keep moving. 
So in this case, again, my line is a little bit over the J point, but you see that there's about two, two and a half millimeters of ST segment elevation in lead one. That elevation occurs once again in lead AVL. And we know that lead one and AVL are reciprocal. I'm sorry, they're contiguous leads. And it's so two or more contiguous leads have ST segment elevation. These are the limb leads, which means they only need one millimeter of ST segment elevation. And indeed we have that. And also, if you recall the lead groups that are reciprocal to that, these are leads two, three, and AVF. And in fact, if we look at leads three and AVF, which have the big changes here, you'll notice that lead three and AVF have significant ST segment depression. So big ST segment depression, big ST segment depression. These are reciprocal changes to the ST segment elevation. So this is localized to the high lateral wall of the left ventricle. So this is STEMI once again. This is the pattern you want to be able to recognize. Let's take a look at the next case. The next case, a quick glance at the EKG, reveals some problems in leads V2 through V5, V6. I've blown that area up for you. Same thing here. No need for me to draw the lines. I'm sure you're starting to get the hang of this. In this case, this is a woman, so it only needs to have 1.5 millimeters of ST segment elevation in leads V2 and V3. It has six or seven in V3. It's got three or four in V2, certainly meets the threshold and it continues on in V4, a little bit in V5. So this is another STEMI, meets the rule of greater than 1.5 millimeter in two or more contiguous leads, and this is the anterior wall. So anterior wall STEMI. You also notice, and if you remember, the reciprocal lead groups for the anterior wall are the inferiors, and if you look closely at the inferior wall here, what you'll notice is that the inferior wall has some subtle ST segment depression here. Not a ton, but just a little bit. Certainly that's the presence of reciprocal change. All right, let's take a look at the next case. All right, in this case, again, if we take a quick peek here, there's a lot going on in this tracing, but we're only interested in ST segment elevation and depression, so I've blown the area up of the precordial leads here and we have the same problem here lead v2 lead v3 now this is a male patient which means the threshold is greater than or equal to two millimeter of st segment elevation in two or more contiguous leads and in fact we have plenty we have six or seven millimeters here we have like 10 millimeters in the v3 and we have a bunch in v4 and i think that's kind of where it is so v1 through v4 here this is the pattern that we're looking for in order to call it STEMI, and we localize it to the anterior wall. Now, same thing, if you remember your reciprocal change groups, you'll remember that the inferior leads are reciprocal to the anterior leads, and indeed, if we look at the inferior leads, in fact, 2, 3, and AVF, all three, you're gonna find ST segment depression here. So this is a clear-cut anterior STEMI with reciprocal changes in the inferior leads. Let's move on to the next case. So this case is the unique case of all of them because this case, you're actually not gonna find much ST segment elevation. There might be one millimeter of ST segment elevation here in lead two, maybe, maybe just a hair above, but it doesn't occur in two or more contiguous leads, although arguably, AVF might have a millimeter. It's kind of hard to say. I'd have to blow that up a little bit more. But what we do find here that's not correct, that, that spells badness for us, is the presence of ST segment depression in greater than or equal to two precordial leads, V1 through V4. And in fact, I've blown that area up so that you can see that. Look at lead V2 here. Let's put a line where the isoelectric occurs for each of these leads and let's put a line where the level of the J point occurs and it's just about there 
and let's do that again down here and you're going to notice there are about three maybe just over three millimeters of ST segment depression so remember two or more precordial leads this only requires one millimeter of ST segment depression here and in fact what we notice is that in leads V2 and V3 we have way more than that and so what this tells us about is posterior wall STEMI so what I've done is I've actually mirrored this image so if you take the mirror what you end up with are leads V7, V8 and V9 you'll notice that I cut off V2 so V1 would be equal to V7, V2 would be V8, and V9. So we've actually taken these leads, and this is what it would look like if you did V7 through V9. Where you saw ST segment depression in, V2, in V1, V2, V3, now you see ST segment elevation. ST segment elevation in those same leads. Massive amount of ST segment elevation and you also see these deep Q waves that are that are going on here this is posterior STEMI so there's really no need for you to do V7 through V9 because this tracing the anterior leads you're actually seeing reciprocal ST segment depression from the posterior wall STEMI that's taking place this rarely occurs in isolation somewhere around 5 percent of all STEMIs and so usually it occurs with the inferior wall so normally we'll have inferior wall changes on the EKG which should prompt us to also look for ST segment changes in V1 through V3 but as long as we capture the ST segment elevation MI that's occurring in the inferior leads it's not as, it's not as worrisome to miss posterior MI what we don't want to do is if posterior MI is occurring in isolation we don't want to miss that and the way to prevent us from missing that is to scrutinize the V1 through V3 leads and look for ST segment depression in those leads in two or more contiguous leads V1 through V3 those tell us about an ongoing and acute posterior wall STEMI alright last but not least was that AVR rule we saw that there was a rule that said if you had ST segment elevation in lead AVR greater than or equal to one millimeter then you would look for multi-lead ST segment depression so let's take a look and see if that holds true here so let's try to find isoelectric this one's a little bit hard to find but we're gonna say isoelectrics about there we're gonna say that the J point is right about here I might be off a little bit in any case you'll see that there's more than one millimeter here there's probably closer to two two and a half millimeter of ST segment elevation from the isoelectric or the baseline so in lead AVR if we find ST segment elevation that exceeds one millimeter now we're gonna look at these other leads and we're gonna determine if there's ST segment depression and lo and behold wow you see it in lead one you see it in lead two there's an AVF an AVL it's in V2 a little bit it's certainly in V3 V4 V5, V6, wow, there is significant and diffuse ST segment depression throughout this tracing and the presence of elevation, ST segment elevation in AVR. This tells us about left main coronary artery occlusion or LAD occlusion. So this is another pattern that we want to call, that we want to recognize. We're going to call this a STEMI equivalent this is going to be a STEMI equivalent is the presence of ST segment eleva elevation in lead AVR even though it's only one lead in this case that's all we require is just that one lead alright so that's a lot of information so let's put it all together between this video and the ischemic change video so every single time you approach the 12 lead EKG to determine the presence or the absence of ischemic change specifically to determine if they're STEMI you want to look at the J point. Find the J point in every single lead. So go to every lead and locate the J point in one complex for every lead and determine if there's ST segment elevation or ST segment depression in any of those leads. If you find ST segment elevation anywhere,
you want to look for localization, meaning look for contiguous leads. So you'll go next to the inferior and determine, do I have ST segment elevation in two or more of the inferior leads? You'll go to the anterior lead group, V1. Let me write these down here. V1 through V4. Again, same thing. Is there contiguous ST segment elevation in leads V1 through V4? You'll also want to look at the lateral lead group. These were groups 1 and AVL or lead V5 through V6 and determine if there's ST segment elevation there. If you find ST segment elevation in two or more leads, you're going to then apply the thresholds. Is it greater than one millimeter in the limb leads? Or is it greater than two millimeters in men in leads V2 or V3? Or is it greater than 1.5 millimeters in leads V2 and V3 if the patient is female? If so, the next thing you want to do is look for reciprocal ST segment depression. So you want to scrutinize one QRS and T in every single lead. Specifically, you want to look for the J point and find the presence or the absence of ST segment elevation. If you find ST segment elevation, you want to localize it using one of the lead groups we mentioned here. Then if you find ST segment elevation and you localize it, you want to determine the presence or the absence of reciprocal change, and that reciprocal change will be in the form of ST segment depression. If all three things are positive, meaning that you do find ST segment elevation, and that ST segment elevation occurs in contiguous leads and in geographically similar areas of the heart, for example, the inferior, the anterior, or the lateral leads, and you have the presence of reciprocal change, you know with certainty that what you're looking at is an acute STEMI, and this patient needs to be sent to the cath lab for emergent reperfusion.